Hello and welcome. My name's Jo, Jo Quincy, Certified Zen Tangle Teacher of Zen Jo Zen Tangle. And today we're going to play with the tangle Shattuck. Okay, so I've got a pen, I've got a Micron PN, Zen Tangle pencil, tortillon and just a simple white tile. So let's start off by doing with our pencil. Let's take a moment for a little bit of gratitude. Thank you for being here. And then we can do corner dots, just with your pencil, nice light dots. And then we're going to join them with a border, which is a light, quick stroke of your pencil. Oops. And creating a border it doesn't have to be straight. The lines can be a little bit wobbly. We're not going to do a string. We're going to go straight in with our pen. <clears throat> And with Shattuck, uh, and I'm going to draw several versions of this. So let's start off with a very simple one. And we start by drawing. I'm just going to draw a line. doesn't matter where you draw the line. And I'm going to do a wide aura. So I'm going to do it about this wide. Whoops, a little bit of a wobble going on there. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to aura inside but quite closely and this will create a lovely border on the inside. You can do it on the outside depending on how wide your ribbon is and the PNs are really nice. You can, you can put a little bit more pressure on them with a the plastic nib. Okay, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to create a zigzag up the side. I'm going to start it here. So I'm going to use straight lines. Okay. And I find it easier to do lines like this. So we've got a lovely zigzag going all up the inside. And this is sort of classic a rid oops, that's gone a bit off there. Um classic original shattuck. You've got your zigzag, go to the bottom one, and I want you to draw lines, auras, underneath. Okay. So you can space them quite closely if you want. And that's the first one. So you're then going to go underneath this one. So turn your tile to make it easy for yourself. And whoop, just go along there and you're going to continue adding these auras underneath. I think that's always an easier way to sort of look at it is underneath the zigzag line. So you're bringing them down to the narrowest point of those little triangles really. Take your time with these lines. Try and pop your pen down on the line and finish it on the line rather than, I mean, we all sometimes go a little bit over or we finish up a little bit short. And if you do that, you can just dab a little bit of ink into the space. Okay. And already you can start seeing sort of like this texture that is created by adding these repetitive lines. And the action of drawing repetitive lines is soothing, restful. We don't have to think too much. We just do them. And I'd encourage you to Look at the end of your pen. Be aware of the ink coming out of the end of your pen. So when I drew the zigzag I did on the last one go whoops because I didn't go quite to the corner. But you know in the big scheme of things it doesn't matter. So bear in mind I'm recording this. I could have gone oh no I've made a mistake. I have to start again. But that's not Zentangle is it? You know we need to go with what we've done. And 
whenever I share Zentangle, it's not about being perfect. It's about enjoying the moment. Okay, sorry, I keep going a little bit off screen there. So here you can't really see where it goes. So you can start from the bottom and work up if you've got a little bit like that. So that is your first shattuck and it's really, really lovely, isn't it? So let's do some more, but we're going to fill this with shattuck and I'm going to add in some variations. So I'm going to create another one and I have to hollyball this one. And maybe I won't make it quite. I'm not going to make it quite as wide on this one. And I'm going to put the aura on the outside. Ooh, going a little bit close there. Doesn't matter. I have to turn my tile to do the aura on the other side. Because then I can see what I'm doing. It's about making it easy for yourself. So. Okay, so I've done the aura there. Let's do a zigzag again. I can start it here, can't I? I can start it this way. And I'm still using the straight lines. They don't have to be exact. So that would go to there, that would go to there, that would come to about there. So you can imagine where the zigzag's going to go underneath that one. So we're going to do the auras, but this time I'm going to add in a little shine break. So uh, that means drawing your aura, but then stopping your pen and starting again. You don't want the little shine break, the little gap to be sort of exact. Adding in a little bit of wonkiness helps. Okay. Doing the same here. Add a little gap. And we just keep doing that same aura. You can see I'm not trying to get the little gaps meeting up. And on the small bits, we don't have to bother. But you'll start seeing that the uh, little shine break, as you do more of these, you'll start seeing it a little bit more. This one we can't do anything with because it's so tiny. So let's start again here. Okay, little shine break. And this adds another level of being mindful because you have to stop and go, oh, right, there's my little break and there I can start it again. And take your time. Remember to breathe, relax your shoulders. Relax your hand. Allow yourself just to be in the moment. And enjoy the quiet and time just for you as you do these lovely repetitive pen strokes, focusing just on what you're doing. Obviously with videos, you can always stop, rewind, take it at your own pace. We all tangle at a different pace. So this one again, I'm going to work from the bottom up because I don't really know. Hmm, it would go, actually it would go there, so I don't have to. I can do that. It's rather convenient, isn't it? And... By adding those little spaces, we add a little difference. So now, in this one, we've got these lovely little shine breaks, and that makes it a little bit different, doesn't it? Let's add another one now. I'm going to do one that comes down this way. Keeping this one sort of straight. 
So what I'm doing here actually is a combination of Shattuck, which is the tangle that I'm drawing, but I'm doing it in a hollybore fashion. And hollybore means you draw underneath you, or effectively draw underneath. The way you do the lines is that you draw, stop, lift your pen and tuck it underneath. And hollybore is a tangle in its own right. Okay, so I've got this ribbon now and what am I going to put in it? I'm actually going to do the zigzag but I'm not going to do it in straight lines, I'm going to do it in a curved line. So we're going to start here, curve over, okay, and in fact that one would come down to around about there. And you can do this curve going up. Now, some people get confused by this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do it one at a time. Forget this one at the moment. We're going to do the auras. And I'm going to go back to auras without a shine break. And we add a little curve. It adds a different look. And when I get down the bottom here, I'm not going to continue the auras, I'm going to ink this in. And this is giving you variations of Shattuck. Okay, so the next one we do, we bring this up here. And then we can add our aura. I'm doing, the, if you're happy to do a curved zigzag all the way up and then do your auras, do that, that's fine. That's how I normally do it, um, but having taught it several times, some people find it a challenge to do the curved zigzags all in one go. Well, that's okay. There's always other ways that you can do it. And we ink that in. Add another one. And this, I, I, I probably, no, not probably, I do um, this version of Shattuck more often than any of the others. Okay. I can go back down here now and just complete this whilst I'm down this end of the ribbon. I'm adding the curve, as you can see starts to make it look very, very different. So curve that way. And gently add in. And when you get down to, I think about there, you can ink that in. And this adding of the ink gives a little bit of strength and depth to Shattuck, gives it a different look. Now this one, I'm going to, it would go up here, so I'm going to go up like that. And then we can add in our auras, all the time focusing on your pen. So with this one, it would come around about there. Then I would go from about there. And as soon as I get to here, that adds in a zigzag. So this one, go back down here. That would be a little bit of inking in, wouldn't it? Everybody, you, all of you will be doing it very differently. Um, so don't worry if yours looks very different. It's okay, it's it's yours. And now I do a curve coming this way. I do like Shattuck, mind you. I probably say that about every tangle I draw. Oh, I do like this. When people ask me what's my favourite, it's usually whichever tangle I'm drawing at the time. And uh, We all have particular favourites. This is 
Um, and it's a classic headquarters, centre angle headquarters tangle. So you can see with this I've done the inking in first because I've only got a little space and we can do that. So you've got one, two, three different versions there. Should we have another one now? We're getting getting into a bit of holly ball going on here, aren't we? So this one is going to come down here. And I'm going to put a little bit of a curve on this, like so. I'm not going to start, I'm going to make it sort of wide-ish so that you can see where we're going to go. And I'm going to, I'll probably do it on the inside of this one. Really doesn't matter. You choose where you're going to do that border line. So we're doing a ball, we're doing these as individual strings. Now you could do a series of these across your tile and do it as a whole filler. Okay, let's carry on with our curved curved zigzag so I'm going to go up and this time I'm going to do them all in one go and you see that I'm drawing and I'm doing it underneath so I do add the zigzags through the air over the areas that I've already added ink to that just means you get some consistency. So there's your zigzag going underneath, tucking underneath. Let's just do the auras. I'm not going to do the inking in on the bottom. Let's just do the auras, first of all. Okay. And this one. So you can do the curved auras simply like this and leave them like this. And that already starts to look a little bit different. And maybe at some point I'll do a follow on video of this to show you how you can do them as a, as a whole, as a filler. Great monotangle, and monotangles are the ones that just allow us to really focus and relax and get lost in, in a nice way, get lost in a nice way, in our creativity. Okay, so we've done the auras, like so. leave it like that that's absolutely fine but what if we ink in now I'm going to start here and I'm going to ink this but I'm only going to ink it part way and I'm going to leave a little bit of a break in the middle and the break in the middle I'm going to leave rough edged miss one and ink only part way And adding in that little ink break actually creates another form of shine break. Okay, so now you're getting down into some tiny weeny ones. So just use little, little pen strokes. Like that and you've got this shine that happens down the center there's always a lot of variations that you can do with something like this as you can see these are uh, so far we've only just done four and i'm sure you'll be able to find a lot more so don't feel that there's only one way to do a tangle most tangles, there are several different ways of doing it. And that's what's fun, isn't it? You know, because you can just go and explore. 
You see, I'm just doing every other one. Adding in this makes it a little bit stronger. Um, so this one is just here. So when I get to these little bits, I try and just do you, you get an impression of it. And can you see the difference between this section and this section now? What a difference it makes. So I usually start from the top and work down in any particular little, I suppose it's a triangular area. Um, and when you're doing this, there's no exact aura to do uh, or exact number of auras. Just go with what feels right for you and what's in front of you. And I love doing this inking in. It just takes a little bit of focus, a little bit of attention. And just let me move that over a little bit so that you can see. A little bit here. A little bit here. And this inking in again adds a different level of attention, of mindfulness, of being aware. And that is one of the beautiful joys of Zentangle, that mindfulness, that allowing yourself just to be. I'm nearly there. You know, does you you do this in your own or at your own speed, whatever is most comfortable. You know, I'm actually just then I was very conscious of feeling the paper through the nib of the pen, um, and that's an element of mindfulness. Just feel the feedback from the paper. About being aware. So look at that. How amazing is that one underneath? Now I feel I need to balance up because this area is a little bit light and airy for me. Okay, so I'm going to do another little. Let's just do a little one or a narrower one. You're doing your border here. And I'm going to do another curve, another curved one. So do your auras. Do your auras. You can see I'm doing all the auras now and I'm going to um, actually repeat what I did last because it will add a little bit of balance and a little bit of strength. Otherwise, one side of the tile has some heavier ink and the other side doesn't. Now, that works on some tangles. OK, so I was talking and I wasn't focusing then. Just need to end those lines so be aware I nearly did it then be aware don't think from here that you've got to go here you've got to come either that way so stop before you do um, a bit that you think oh no I didn't mean to do that okay so I'm going to do the same down here I'm just adding some of that ink just strengthen that one and nice and gently I 
I don't know whether you can hear it. I've got a clock in my office here and it sort of ticks quite loudly. I find it quite a restful sound. Um, sometimes when I'm tangling, I'll have music or an audiobook. I actually really like listening to audiobooks when I'm tangling. You sort of absorb more of what is being read, whether it's a story, fiction or non-fiction. Um, sort of that real focus, I think. And but many times I don't use any, I don't have anything because I like like that silence. Well, it's never silence, I can actually hear birds outside and I just become a little bit more aware of things. Okay, so although I'm using a PN, um, know that you can use whatever pen you feel most comfortable with. Okay. And this one is like that. Okay, so there is Shattuck. Uh, I'm I'm actually just going to do something else with this, just just because I can. I'm going to add like little Enzeppel bubbles, and Enzeppel is a whole other tangle. So imagine you've got a big balloon and you're squishing it in here, and it won't quite go into the corners. So. Just, what did you do? Curve it round as if you're squishing, as I say, a balloon into a really tight box. I'm actually going to close that one off there like that. And squish it in, go all the way around the edges. And around there. And then ink in little spaces left. You're not drawing an orb inside it, you're going to draw along the line and then curve it round, tuck it in. You're going to come along the line, curve it round, so that you're actually sort of rounding the edges, the sharp corners, rather than adding an a, a, a sort of separate orb within. You'll see that when I'm drawing, I've quite often got my hand just holding my tile down. Sometimes I'm not even aware of my other hand. Um, or what it's doing. So I'm going to come down here and I'm going to come round. And you see I tuck it right in. So it feeds back into the border lines of whatever shattuck I'm going alongside. This just will add a little difference. It sort of completes what you've tangled. See, I've added that and a little bit of a curve going out, and that's okay. It adds. I, I quite like sort of making the borders eventually a little, having a little bit of interest so it goes outside, outside the border. Bring this round. So by that I mean, let's just do it on this one. So we're right on a corner, aren't we? Right on a corner. So bring this round and I'm going to just round that so that, let's just do that round like that, just adds a little bit of something different, doesn't it? Uh, oh, I've got one tiny one here, and then I'm just going to go back to one that was on the border that I haven't, sometimes, you know, you, you do something in a tile, and then you go, oh, no, I actually want to go back and change that a little bit, and that one is this one, because I didn't, it was one of the first ones I did. And I'm just going to do that. And you can see it's gone outside the border. It 
just gives it a little bit of something. So look, there's the there's your tangling done. So put your lid on your pen. Going to get your pencil. Make sure it's nice and sharp. So where are we going to shade? So shading is always where lines meet, converge, start or stop. That's well, not always. That's a that's a rule of thumb. So let's go back to this first one, and I'm it's going to go all the way down the inside of the border using the side of your pencil. Going to put graphite all the way along the edge there, and I'm going to put graphite all the way along the edge here. So by adding shade, what we're going to add is sort of a, a, a 3D effect. Okay, so I'm going to do that first of all. Now get my tortillon, fix it all in place. So do your little rotations of your tortillon. You want to blend it so you lose that harsh line. And you want to blend it again. Okay, so already that looks like the centre is going down a little bit deeper. Now we've got where the lines, because that's where those lines finish, but they also finish here. Here. And here. So basically on top of that first zigzag line, we already underneath the zigzag line and now we're putting graphite where those lines finish so where you've got the blunt lines and I'm making it quite dark I'm not going to spread it out very far okay and now fix it and lose the harsh line you want to keep some contrast you must keep some contrast if you do it all gray just be flat gray so you want to have some white or blank space so that you've got the contrast to give you the impression that you want with the shading oh look at that suddenly it's all sort of zigzaggy isn't it you know and it looks like they're layered on top of each other so that was that first one. <clears throat> Next one we did was this one here. Little shine break. So I'm just going to turn it round sideways there. Same thing. I'm going to go down the edge. Pretty much the shading is going to be the same on all of these. And all well, the same principles anyway. And the fun thing about this one is we've left a shine break in, haven't we? In the centre. So we're going to come down the sides and my my one is a little bit thinner the ribbon on this one so i want to keep the graphite out of that shine break because we want the shine break to be nice and bright and white so that it it shows up basically okay same thing then where the lines then meet on the zigzag You want to do the same. So it's exactly the same that we did in the first one. And soften it, but keep it out of the shine break so that that has the impact that you want. And because you haven't got any ink in there, it's even brighter than the one, the first one we did. So you've now got this lovely shine break that comes down here. So you've got those two. Let's go to the one that's got the um, the curves on. Same thing. Let's just go on where they those lines meet at the borderline. Now I'm not putting graphite on the um, inked in areas because that just goes a little bit uh, silvery. You don't need to put graphite onto where you've got ink a lot of ink okay so I'm doing these more like individual sections okay and I have to turn my tile 
I hope it doesn't make you dizzy. Always turn your tile to make it easier on yourself so that you're not reaching your hand across what you've tangled. Okay, so we've done those. And now I can add it where those lines meet. Also where they go underneath here. So once you know, oh, that's what we're doing, we just do pretty much the same with all of the Shattuck versions, but they will all look slightly different because of the curved lines, the inking in, the shine breaks, um, and, and, and you can go and play with these. So that's that one like that. And now we've got the two um the two that have like the striping effect the stripey effect okay and let's just pop pop graphite now with this yes there is inking in and um because it's sort of quite narrow i have popped the graphite over and that's all right So you've only got sort of narrow little spaces to pop this in. And I know that on the recording you can hear my tortillon scratching backwards and forwards. Um, but there's something sometimes quite soothing about that when you're doing your own tangling. And you don't need lots of pressure on your tortillon. Let's see with this, I'm just going where those white lines meet on the edge and again you don't want your graphite going into the center and by bringing it towards where that shine break is and leaving the area on the white lines clear you sort of accentuate the shine that goes down the center So that's those one, and then we're going to do exactly the same. See, what I did here was the, the zigzags actually went in the other direction, so you add a little bit of interest by varying which directions your zigzags go in. Oh, you can have hours of fun doing this. And you can make these ribbons wider or narrower. Really, really, really just play, 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 play. I mean, I say this in all my classes play with what you are creating and with play you learn more and anyway it's lots of fun okay so that is those the other thing because they holly bore underneath i'm just going to accentuate where the ribbons go underneath so i'm adding quite a lot of graphite here on those edges so oh my gosh just be aware when you're adding lots of graphite where you are adding it here and you don't want to get your hand rubbing over it but this will if I keep it fairly close because you don't want it all to be smudgy do you close to there it will look like they're going underneath okay I'm just accentuating that holly ball effect and here here and basically then I've just got these sections so I am trying not to do too much onto the inked areas but I'm not that worried and then so this little one you're gonna this little section be a little bit more aware that you still want to keep that contrast or white so that it doesn't go completely um, dark. Okay. I'm gonna keep that quite close in, but you've still got elements of white in there, okay? Just gonna do a bit on the edges, and then we've just got this one. So 
this is quite a small one, isn't it? It sounds like I'm throwing my pencil down on the desk. I'm not. Okay. And lastly, I'm just going to add a little bit of graphite just on these sort of Enzeppel bubbles. And I'll do another video to show you Enzeppel so that we can play with Enzeppel. Quite often when I'm doing these recordings, what you get is what I'm what I've decided to do at the time, which is all really what Zentangle is. So I've done little half or little semi curves. I'm going to soften that and just drag it down a little way. I'm going to keep the white section. Okay. And you can see that gives a little bit of interest to those what I suppose would be negative space areas. You still want to keep the white because it adds the contrast. Add a little smudge there. And so I've shown you in this how to do Shattuck in a variety of ways. And there's more that you can play with. Okay, and that is your tangling and shading done. So the next thing we're going to do is step seven of the Zentangle method, and we're going to sign it and date it. So I'm going to pop my little chop in here. There we go. Turn it over, sign it, date it on the back, and then take a moment to look at what you've created, appreciate it, maybe hold it at arm's length and enjoy what you have created. And I can't wait to see what you do. Thank you for joining me. Bye.